How you doing guys? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review. Buds in tow again. Um, Amanda and Joe of NEPA Beer Reviews. Say hi guys. Hello. Hi. Um, we did uh, just popped off a review earlier and figured we'd throw another one in the uh, mix. And today we're going to be uh, reviewing a beer I've never had before and I've never seen before um, by a brewery. Almost all of you have had it if you're into craft brewery. Yeah. Be crap brewery, crap beer, whatever. Um, delirium. Um, I have not had Delirium Tremens, just because I'm not a big triple fan. I have had Delirium Nocturnum, though. Yeah, Tremens is a golden ale, though. It's mm -hmm. not a triple, so... There is a difference! Yeah, but, yeah, but, no, I understand. They're very... They're telling the same line. And it's, they kind of... You're going on... The, it's you're, you're walking on a fence, and you could either fall into triple or you could fall into gold. The funny thing is, is that... My idea, and we were talking about I found an old triple the other day, and I told him uh, to go to this place and try it, and I think he would like it. If you have, like, a, a, in my eyes, a real triple, you would like it, because I think some triples dip in the golden ale, and some golden ales dip in the triples, and there's not a def defining, defining factor line. Either. I like both styles, but in my eyes, the reason why you like the beers you like, the reason why you don't like triples is because they lack that creaminess they're a little bit flat I a like, little bit thin and there's um, not much to it. it at least in the belgian categories apart from you know sours which are a whole nother ball, ball game. game uh i like the darker belgians i like you know quads and doubles and strong ales and like that kind of stuff i gotcha yeah but uh what about you what are you, you a big belgian fan i like quads um yeah. I don't think I've had a lot of um, a lot of different ones, but um, I like doubles and quads. Say. Yeah, I mean that's I think that's yeah. a universal thing. It's a, yeah. most people like those. But uh, Delirium is known for their tremens. They're known for their nocturnum. Known for their Noel. Oh, wow. They make a yeah. couple of things. Um, I've never seen this before. Delirium Red. It's you know it's a fruit veggie beer, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? It's a flavored beer. Um, not sure what is going to happen when we drink it, but I'm going to give it a whirl. I mean, Delirium's your classic Belgian, as far as yeah, the it, bottling it, it's and labeling like, goes. Like, it's the name, who made it, and on the back it says, you'll die because the U.S. makes them put it there. You're going to die if you drink this, and where it's from. And that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's is there not, an alcohol? Is there an ABV Yes, on? there's an ABV in the back, and it is 8%. 8%. Okay. So it's like, you know... And it's that faux stone that uh, Delirium likes to do. I mean, it's faux stone, but it still like looks pretty cool. So I'm a big fan. They do have the best, like, bottle-wise. I absolutely love their bottles. I think that kind of... I'm wary of uh, yeah. Belgian. They like a pop hard sometimes. Oh. I've almost lost an eye. Oh, yes. I'm not even pulling on it, and it just came out. I didn't even yank it. Like, as opposed to when we reviewed... Uh, uh, Angel Share. It took oh, me yeah. Five, like it, 10 it minutes. Rip, Half that review that is cork trying to cork out. If this didn't have the cage on it, it would just be... It everywhere. would have gone everywhere in transport. So, let's see what this sucker has as far as... Okay. I know why it's called red. Yeah. Yeah, that's... <laughs> even the... Looks uh, like cherry. Even the head, head is the red. The head is like... Has like a nice pink tint to it. Yeah, this is a... Uh, you bring this to a... A Mother's Day party or a breast cancer awareness function. Yeah. You know? Not to make light of cancer. I'm no, not no, doing no, that. No. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that. That's a beer the color. function for. Yeah. A beer function for breast cancer. Yes. Because there are beer functions for breast cancer. For breast cancer. Well, if it's bottle condition, you're getting some funk, but I don't think it is. Because I don't think any delirium uh, bottles are. Bottle I don't condition. know. I've only had uh, Nocturnum out of a growler. Okay. Uh, 17, he's had it on tap oh, nice. a couple years ago. And uh, we picked up a growler of it. Yeah, Nocturne is probably my favorite of what I've had from them. Yeah. Um, as far as coloration, I mean, like you said, like the head, when it poured, it was probably less than a finger, and it was like pink. Pink. Which is Tinged probably it. the first pink head. No, Frambois almost has like a pink head to it. That Lindman's Frambois, yeah. Yeah, but not too much, uh, but this is like pink. Um, even like the Three Fontaine and Oak Creek, that's not even... But there were, yeah, right. that's like that's that's not like that head does not have a, a I, pink tinge to it. I don't like sours, so yeah. I've never experienced. You know, I yeah. steer away from that stuff. So Three Fontaine is very good though. <laughs> um, as far as body, I mean, it's it's red also, but it's um, not super red in body. Yeah, almost more like a brownish red. It yeah, seems like it's got that 
Like, hold it up to the light. I don't know if I, I just have a, like, haze on there. Yeah, but it looks it's like not, some density to it. Yeah, it's not very clear. Yeah. And it does look almost brown as opposed to the red when, when the light was coming out. through it. Yeah. When I was pouring it, you're like, that's red, but when it gets in the glass, it's more brown. So I expect it to be more vibrant red. Mm. Mm-hmm. Let's get the nose. Oh, I like fruit punch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of fruit uh, punch. That's just, it's just fruits. It's red fruits. It's your cherries and cherries, your strawberries, strawberries and raspberries. raspberries. Yeah. It's, it smells it's, um, like, a, like, smells like fruit punch. I don't want to, I don't want to knock it down, but it's, um, it's Turkey Hill fruit punch. There don't there. make fun of Turkey Hill fruit punch. No, I love Turkey Hill fruit punch. <laughs> like, the, that's what it smells like to yeah. me. What, what are you thinking? Same thing, probably, Same yeah? Same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so on the nose, mm, uh, that, uh. It, t- it smells yeah. exactly, I mean, if but, it's supposed to be, like, I mean, there's cherries hanging from the pink elephants here, so, I mean, that kind of gives it away what it's supposed yeah. to be like, so, I mean, if I, that's what they're going I do for, get a lot of, like, fresh raspberry, f- like, it's raspberry. all fresh fruit. Yeah. You know, it's not like, it's it doesn't a, smell artificial. No, not at all. It's red fruit. But, uh, you know, Turkey Hill Fruit Punch smells artificial, though. It does. Yeah, but, so. like, that was, like, initial. The first sense they came First sense is, like, this smells like fruit. It smells delicious. Like I'm, uh, I like fruit punch. I like sweet beers, so I'm excited to yeah. taste it. Let's Cheers. Give it a try. Cheers. Wow. I like it. Yeah, that's not bad. And this is coming from a guy. This guy, who doesn't like sour beers, it tastes every bit of a sour beer without being sour. If that stuff makes any sense. It does, and. To me, I like sour beers, and I'm like, "Where's the sour? Why <laughs> isn't this sour? sour? This should be sour." It tastes like to me because I've had sour. I try. I'll try any beer. I mean, in my eyes, if you Which like, I, if you like beer, you're gonna try it regardless of the style. To me, this, I have a, I have a lot of respect for you on that aspect because it's like you you will try styles that you don't typically like. To then say, to justify, well, I don't like it because of this. Yeah, why? You know, it's like, you're not just going to go, I don't think I would. It's not, I don't think I would like it. Yeah. It's, I have had it, I don't like it. That comes from me, I used to be, um, I used to be that way with food. Huge. Um, I used to go to, out to eat with uh, friends of mine, and they would offer food to me, and I would automatically say, I don't like that, without, without ever having to try that, or try it. And one time I said that, I made a big point of it because a friend of mine was trying to push a food on me, not push it, but he was like, come on, try it. And I was like, I don't like that. And I got home and it was the first time I heard myself doing that. And I was like, why am I being that person where I'm not actually experiencing it to know for sure? And I had a friend of mine who was going to culinary school send me a cookbook, a French cookbook, and of stuff she assumed I would hate based off of her knowing what I like and don't like. And I, I... Open that cookbook and I made every recipe in it, regardless of why. I was like, I'm gonna hate all this, but I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna make everything. And one, it became a decent cook, but two, it I retrained my brain to be like, I don't care what it is, food or drink wise, I'll try it, so I know for a fact I'm not gonna like it. Because what, like, why you're just gonna assume you don't like something doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, but as far as this goes, if I'm gonna relate it to an, a, to someone who drinks beer. If, if a framboise had sex with a sour and then eliminated the sour, the sour. Yeah. that's almost exactly well, what it tastes like for to me. I think like, like Lindman's framboise, it's, it's kind of supposed to be sour. It should. It, it should be. It should well, be sour. Well, traditional lambics are sour, but they, they yeah. sweeten it up for they, American dumb people. But even not, in, if even you like in, that, I'm not calling you dumb. But even in Belgium, like, like Cantillon is a, a niche market in Belgium. You know, like, their Lindman's has taken over to where traditional Lambic is, like, here. And Lindman's is, like, here. Yeah. You know? So it's just, like, sweet, syrupy fruit juice instead of tart, sour fruits. And that's the thing. There is a slight tartness to this. It, 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 a little bit. I'm not, I'm not picking up. Let me, let me try it again. There is for me. I don't drink sours at all, so if there's the smallest hint of any kind of tartness, I'm gonna pick up on it. Whereas just you, just a little like 
a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. For that's me. and that's what I'm saying. It's not prominent. Yeah. It just in a way that like I I like Flamboise, but it's a beer that I like in a specific moment because of how sweet it is. Like it's it's Flamboise is like super sweet to me to the point where I almost can't drink it. Yeah. Um, but I have to be in the mood for it. This is like a dialed back version of that to where it's like not as yeah. What do you think? All right. Well, what I'm getting is, you know, I don't mind that it's not sour. I do see how, like you guys are saying, that it tastes like it should be a sour, but it's not. But it's it's almost like cherry juice, but it has a little bit of brightness to back it up. So I don't feel like I'm just drinking juice. Like, do you ever have a beer that's, um, for instance, like we tried Wild Red and Wild Blue, mm -hmm. where it tasted just like sugary juice? This isn't that at all. It's it's um a bunch of fruit flavors, but it's not like too sugary or too sour. It still reminds you of beer. It's not like a like right. a like it's a malt still beer. liquor. Yeah. You know, it's it's not it's, like, oh, it's, it's tiptoeing on that. Like it's very yeah. it's it's very far from it's for me it's very far from a beer. Like if but you it's still added a if you added a bunch of fruits to a brown ale. You know. I don't know. I think of brown ale. I think of a specific thing, so that doesn't. Well, like work. just kind of like a, like just a baseline ale, you know, yeah. it's not like a, like a nutty brown ale or anything like just a yeah, generic just ale. a generic just. I get ale. Thing, yeah. Put fruits in just ale. It is. This. <laughs> But it doesn't taste art. Like what I really like about it is the fact that it doesn't taste artificial at all. Um, it tastes like fresh, like fresh fruits were used, um, and it still tastes like beer because that's my biggest yeah. thing with flavored beer, fruit beer. Right. I don't want juice. I want beer with fruit. Yeah. You don't want to think you're drinking cherry soda. You're yeah. drinking. It almost it almost feels like I should have beer. pulp in it. That's how like fresh yeah. it tastes. It doesn't mm -hmm. fresh. It tastes synthetic in any way. Like I should have. Bits raspberry raspberries. Seeds. It is. It's like if I were to put percentage wise, I'd put it like fifty percent cherry, thirty percent raspberry, and then like twenty percent other fruits. You know what I mean? Like yeah. to me, cherry's prominent, then that raspberry, and I think that's where I get that slight bit of tartness from. From the raspberry itself, because it's not from the beer. It's mm -hmm. like kind of have that weird tartness you get from a, a raspberry. Yeah. Uh, that's where I think I'm getting that from, not the beer itself, but it's good. I mean. There's there's no hops. There's no, to me. There's really no no maltiness to it. I mean, there's sugariness to it. But there's no maltiness to it. There's no, like it's it is a beer, and I know it's a beer. It's not. I'm not confused at that point. But it, the fruit is the is the star of the show. It's it's which I I think that like if they're going for that, then they've nailed it. You know. Yeah, I like it. I like it too. Yeah, I mean, I it's a weird one to rate because yeah. it's like, it's like almost like rating something new on a generic scale of whether I like it or not. That's what I'm gonna rate it as because I I don't know what else to compare it to. I would yeah. probably I give mean, it a base ninety. I mean, if I went into this thinking it was supposed to be a sour, I would rate it very low because it's not sour. Yeah, but for what it is, I'd go with like. Like B plus, kind of like A minus range. Yeah, I give it a ninety just because it's like I'm enjoying drinking it. Like it's, yeah, I, it's mean, a I weird, like it. It's a weird because I don't know what where to play it. Like it's I'm, unusual. Yeah, I've never had yeah. it before, but I keep I I want to put I want some more. Yeah, you know, so I'm gonna give it like a ninety. The only, have you ever had any of the um, like the fruit beers that uh, Founders mm -hmm. puts out, like Rubius and Cherise? Uh, no. I've had the the cherry one, which is last year's and that was pretty good and it kind of reminds me a little bit of that and what Founders does with their fruit beers is that the fruit is the star okay. of the show you know so like under that kind of pretense this is fruits fruit shining but at the end of the day there's a beer backbone to it you know yeah. whatever base style you want to call it it's there yeah it's not, it's not it's not so it's not it's not lambic it's not like I, I wouldn't call lambic a beer, for the framboise style lambic. To me, it's almost like a, fi a Fisher Price, my first, 
like beer for the not to be sexist, but a girl's way in. Like the girls like who drink like Mike's hard lemonade and whatever. Yeah. Like they're always like, I don't like craft beer, but I like Frambois. Like a lot of them say that to me, mm-hmm. you know, because of the amount of sugar in it. Um, Just because so it's yeah. almost like a pseudo, like kind of almost like pseudo like whiny. Yeah, and that's it, it, like yeah, like a like a like a like a wine cooler. Yeah. But jacked up. Whereas this isn't that. This is a beer that's. That's like a wine cooler that's tipping towards a beer, whereas this is a beer tipping towards a fruit. You know, like it's coming from a different direction. What would you rate it at if you were to give it a rating? I would do an A minus. Honestly, I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. I was expecting kind of like a, a really thin fruit flavor to Nika it. disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but uh. Um. But I, I like that it has. I could still tell that it's beer, and I like that about it. So I would give it an A minus, nice. and I'm still drinking it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as far as the weird niche stuff, I do. I do. Uh, you know, label of like I said, I love, love that stuff. Um, availability, I've never seen it before, but I know where to get it. So it's one of those weird things where I don't know how to give it like availability scale because I don't think it's been available. Till recently, till recently. So I, I mean, like, I, would I would give it like a five, just because I know I could right now. I can go get a, a, one of these or four pack of it right now. Um, so we'll I'll adjust <laughs> that in the future based yeah. on what happens. I I would kind of like to see how it ages, like kind of where it goes. I know, with right? Time. It's eight percent, so it's right on the edge of like. Mm, like this is what I. Age or like, is I it? would put the. I would still like at eight percent. I would still put this on my shelf. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. What, but that's what I mean. Eight percent is kind of like. Is it going to age yeah. well or isn't it going to age well? Um, as far as uh, value, is, uh, I paid $13 for it. I mean, that's your going rate for a Belgian big bottle. You know yeah, what I mean? So, I mean, bad. that's company line, total company line. You're looking at a 7 as far as value. But, yeah, no. I mean, if you like sweet, if you like Belgian ales and you want to try something different, just give it a whirl just off that. Because Delirium has this. I mean, Delirium is one of the, they're almost... They're on the Mount Rushmore of Belgian style be- beers. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, without del- everybody knows Delirium, like, um, so if you, they don't produce a bad product. Even if you don't like some of their styles, it's style, still a it's good still beer. Good. Even it, like I, I kind of I like to do the if you've never had a certain style before, try this. But sours are a weird style. I'm not saying that this is a sour. But sours are a weird style that you almost have to dive headfirst into no. to see if you like it or not. Because yeah. there's no, like, there's, like, with IPAs, there's IPAs that are less bitter than some, less hoppy than some. So you can kind of ladder, you, like, you can kind of step stone your way up to the big, yeah. the big boy IPAs, you know, like your Maharajas and shit like that. Yeah. With sours, you kind of just have to dive directly in. And then, gain, and, and then train your palate to like it. Yeah, almost. Yeah. almost. Like if you if you like sour things already, like my friend Chris. Yeah. Like he loves sour candy. Yeah. So like sour beers are the only beer that Chris his can mouth eat candy waters all day. Yeah, he can eat candy <laughs> all day. Chris can't live without candy. Uh, but he. <laughs> he like, tried Cantillon, and that was it for him. Cantillon, like, that's his man. Favorite. His, his first, I, his first, his first shrine at home, the Cantillon. Yeah, yeah like his, <laughs> I, I introduced no him kidding. to uh, to Cantillon. We had Boone's Creek, and then from Sabatini's, I got a bottle of Cantillon Creek that was from 2011. We tried it, and he's like, "Sour beers are my thing." <laughs> he's like, "I fucking love sour beers." Like now. it was like this. He went like this. He's like, "Mmm." I like this is the best thing ever in the history of mankind. Like yeah, that, and that's an epiphany like that is great when it comes to beer. You know? Yeah, so like that's the only style of beer like you really love like your big multi beers. Yeah. He loves his mouth waters for sour beers. So but like there's no like I said there's no stepping stone into sour beers. You can't like mm. you can't ease your way into it. You gotta find. But it. it's also a love and hate thing. There's it like is. there's there's a lot of like neutral road beers and for me, I've. I've yet to give sours a good run. Like, I've tried them periodically, and I'll always try them. Mm-hmm. But like you said, I think I want to do, like, give it a couple weeks of where I just drink sours. Just to, like, maybe maybe it's that thing where I did that with scotch. I wasn't in a scotch, and as this weird side story, I started drinking scotch. 
and uh, no one likes scotch when you first drink it. It's just, you have to drink it for a while, and then all of a sudden, the switch flips, and you're like, wow, this is pretty good stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, I think I might try to do that with sours just so I can get on the boat. So I feel like I'm missing out because people talk about it in a good way. And like a lot of, like you see a lot of beer pictures on Instagram, it's always like 2009 fucking Lambic something, Lambic this or that. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah. Uh, I would rate it, like I said, a 90 even. I think everybody else is pretty much on board yeah, with that. Yeah, like A minus is about a 90. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, value, you know, decent in line with all the Belgian stuff. And the um, availability is like middle of the road because I think it's new, so it's hard to rate it. But, uh, but yeah, another review down. Another one in the books. Um, NEP beer reviews okay. on the internet, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, except if you're going to go to the website, which is NEPbeerreviews.com. Yep, correct. And then Amanda is an, at NEPA beer blogger on Twitter. Uh, no Instagram right now. And any NEPA beer review that. stuff that she does is on the website. So. And Massive Beers at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, check us out there. If you like this review or you hate it or whatever, comment, suggest other stuff we should like and yell at us or do whatever or uh, hopefully you share and hopefully we see you next time so cheers cheers